Hi, my name is Scott. I'm a radon mitigator in Virginia. I make videos for other radon mitigators, those looking to get into the business, and if you're a homeowner, check out www.nrsb.org. That's National Radon Safety Board. Plug in your zip code. That'll put you in touch with a certified radon professional in your area. We're doing an earth-toned radon system today uh, with a couple, a couple little surprises. What is that? That's a cross face vent. Are we going to treat that cross face too? I don't know. Stay tuned and we'll find out. Okay, I don't know what it is, but I am super jacked to be putting in a radon system today. I guess spring has sprung and it's, it's put a spring in my step. So uh, right here on this house, let me show you how we lock this pipe in. It is so simple and almost archaic, but it is it works. You're always going to find pebbles and rocks and debris, and that's how I lock the pipe into place. Believe it or not. And of course, I know you know you, you use little tricks here because the pipe will get away from you, and you want to know exactly how it mocks up, like so. All right, and so I've I've been putting. The level to it inside and out inside and out and, uh, and knocking my little pebbles into place to lock it in and that's not going anywhere all right okay so this is called backer rod it's a form of insulation and we just use that as a, essentially a gap filler once we have the pipe locked into place and just tuck it in like so one dilemma we had with this earth tone house to decide what color to make the radon system. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I had, my props were, were falling over while I was making this. Okay, so let me show you what we were up against. First of all, what color do you think that is? I don't know. I honestly don't know. What I do know is that it's white will not work. So it's somewhere between gray and brown so let's see what they look like which one do you like better it's hard to tell um, I can save you some trouble here you know at first brown looked good to me but gray up by itself and ultimately that's what the homeowners chose that's what they like the best and this gray is primer so if so my is disenchanted later. It's easily paintable. But uh, that took a little time to work out. And if you've watched my videos, you know my policy. I've got three colors that I've gotten away with. White, gray, and brown. And I've yet to find a scenario where that hasn't worked. But when you come into decisions like these, it's good to bring the, the homeowners in on it and see what they think. Uh, Ultimately, in the end, nobody wants to see them or hear them, and we, we want everything to be as neat as possible. All right, now we're here on the inside. And if you didn't know with your level, that's how you find your 45 degree angles. If you've ever wondered what this weird, what this, what, right, this diagonal is for, um, the tool I use the most, always in my back pocket. So what we're doing right here is we need to get around this water heater. As you can see outside, we needed to be as close to the wall as possible, but what you think is kosher outside might not jive with the inside. So we measured and measured and measured, and I had a couple of proposed spots uh, right here. You see that little mark right here? Use pencils. Use pencils. <laughs> um, nobody's gonna see those unless they're absolutely looking for them. At the same marks outside until we ultimately decide upon this location and you don't want to uh, screw over the next guy. Uh, so this water heater will need to be changed out someday. This HVAC line, uh, we want to give those folks access to that if they ever need be. So we're going to have to jig and jag a little bit to make this thing happen. We always want 45 degree angles as opposed to 90s. Only use 90s unless you absolutely have to. 90s, 90s cut off your airflow big time. So. We're gonna go with that. Now, I don't have it glued yet. I've, I've gotta uh, ultimately make my hole here, but I don't wanna glue this until I absolutely have to either. So, 
let's see, I just glued this, but I didn't glue these guys. All right, so I'll show you what that's all about. All right, so we've got our center lined up where we're gonna uh, make our pilot hole. It's my little plumb bob trick. See how that works? And then since things are not glued yet, so we're marking them, how we wanna put them back together when we do wanna glue. Use your pencil. Okay, what I wanted you to see there is how it eventually pushed through and what came back on the tip. Uh, if the tip comes back with a bunch of mud and dirt, that's bad. <laughs> we want it to come back clean, which is a good indicator of gravel. Why am I concerned? Well, there's lots of cracks in this concrete. See that? The house is, is relatively new construction in the grand scheme of things. The cracks in the concrete indicate uh, potential lack of gravel, and we want gravel to make the air flow. But um, so far so good right there. We'll keep pressing on. All right, I've teased you about crawl space. Uh, to treat it or not to treat it. Well, so this is the crawl space. I'll show it to you. All right, so as you can see, it's well vented. We're not gonna treat it. Uh, you, well, that's just the short answer. <laughs> We're not going to treat it, why? It takes up a quarter of the footprint of the house. If you step back from it, and sort of one, two, three, four. So, and it's well vented. And also the test results came back at like 4.5 pico curies. So it, this house just barely failed. So this radon thing is as much of an art as it is a science. I mean, you could get really nerdy about it and measure in there versus out here, but we don't have time to make a long drawn out process of this. This house is closing in just a few days, so they need me to put in a system and validate that we've reduced the radon levels all in time for the closing. And uh, so you take all that information, knowing what the levels were, and taking a good look at the crawl space, that's one that we're gonna ignore. Uh, we don't get those a lot. We're just treating this as if it's just a sub-slab depressurization system. And that will be enough work right there. Okay, we've just made our hole and we see lots of gravel. That's what we want. Okay, so this is why I have two buckets with me. I have a junk bucket. Uh, this right here, that's, that's a good indicator too that whoever poured the floor cared. Um, and then a gravel bucket. So this is what I haul off with me in my trash bag. This right here is what I disperse either in the woods or take back home and put it in my driveway, whatever. If there's dirt or gravel, it's separate from junk because you gotta throw away junk. Why weigh, why weigh yourself down with gravel or dirt when you can disperse it in the woods or whatever? I'm in a pretty rural area right now, so I can uh, certainly get away with that. Okay, what do we have here? That would be a sewer line, or more specifically, a drain line that connects to the uh, septic system for this home. What are we gonna do? Well, it turns out it's no big deal. <laughs> so that's, that's okay. It happens more frequently than uh, you would think. Um, but if you recall, all right, now check out this footage here. You'll see the drill break through and then immediately hit resistance. So that pipe right there 
was that resistance. And I would love to tell you that I'm some great know-it-all and knew that that was a sewer line the entire time, but that would be a lie. What I thought it was, was the footer, that there's a footer that these, these blocks are stacked upon, and I thought that I just simply, you know, touched on that. They'll come out, you know, about a foot or so, quite frankly, and I had to trim this pipe back a little further than what I usually do. So that's what I thought I'd hit, and it's worthless to force that. Uh, once you know you're through uh, the slab, just core it out and then deal with that, deal with whatever is down there when you get down there. And that's what we've got. And I've been able to get enough gravel around that. So this, this sewer line is not uh, the factor that it appears to be. It's not a big deal. We didn't break it or anything like that. Um, because even with these beefy tools, uh, there, there still is a little delicacy. Uh, once you get to where you want to go, back off and clear all the stuff out and see what you've got to deal with next. I've encountered water lines below there. I, you know, knock on wood or whatever. <laughs> There's no wood. Uh, I've, you know, I've never broken anything, just uh, because I, I know through experience, I know when to be rough with it and then when to back off. Clear your stuff out. See what you've got to do to deal with next. And that's what we've got. And we've been able to excavate around that pipe, and it's not going to be a factor at all. So here's the septic uh, stuff, and you know, I, I am also a plumber, I should have seen it coming, but, uh, <laughs> but again, it's not a factor, so it's no big whoop. I'll tell you where it could have been a big whoop, is if there was dirt in there as opposed to gravel, where I'd need to get a digging bar and work it out and get all kinds of debris out of that hole. But sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> but what would I have done? Well, you should watch more of my videos. I cover stuff like that. You should give a thumbs up and subscribe. All right, so now that we know what the gravel content is like underneath the slab, we're ready to commit to wiring in the fan. And as you see here, we have two fans that look identical, but they are very different. So we were prepared if we had undesirable uh, <laughs> gravel content underneath there. I call this the mud sucker. It's just a beefier, heavier fan than that. That is a conventional fan. That's got a four inch inlet and outlet, and this has three inch. It's just, there's a lot more to this one. So I, I do discuss uh, different fans in my other videos, but we were prepared for both scenarios. And as you can see, the fans are gray. They don't always have to be white. And uh, that's something that you're going to want to have in your arsenal when uh, you're doing earth tone houses. Okay, real quick, I want to show you how I make my clamps to support the exhaust for the system. And I've gotten away from using uh, downspouts I use a thin gauge PVC. And there we've got some uh, the, the gray setting up over there. Downspouts are now frowned upon code-wise. There's exceptions to the rule, but rather than getting into that, I just got away from them altogether, unless I absolutely have to. And there's always that exception out there, but we're not gonna get into that. So I like to use a thin gauge PVC not the thick stuff. You, you're going to see the cats that don't know what they're doing use the thick stuff. And But I do use the, the Schedule 40 to make my clamps. Okay, you can set, kind of surmise how I cut that out. And I just simply ream it out with a 3 8 inch bit, but not all the way through. Then take a smaller bit, punch the hole, and then I use these little hex screws. So once they're wrapped around the pipe, alright, you see how that works? Ooh, that's nice. Yes, sir. And then when you put it up against the house, you've got this little guy right there to help score where you will ultimately screw it in. So that's really been working for me, and uh, I hope that helps you out. 
All right, so we are building up the system here, the exhaust. And I like to put the hubbed end of the pipe at the very tippy top. I think that's a nice accent. And I like to use a critter guard. Uh, it's actually gutter guard. Uh, here it is. Comes in rolls. I just fold it and seal it in. Let's air pass through going out but critters and leaves will be uh, repelled. And we're back. We're done for the day. Mission accomplished. I think it came out pretty nice. The homeowners were pleased as well. Um, giving them input, definitely a smart move. It, it was only between two choices, so it's not like they were gonna make me uh, you know, go nuts with uh, decision making. Uh, and quite frankly, I think they could have flipped the coin. I think Brown would have worked out just fine as well. But I'll show you how we came out on the inside too. Moving a lot of air on this one, uh, that gravel, that worked out just fine for us. It sealed the cracks in the floor with the uh, sealant, clear silicone to be specific. And then the way we kick this pipe out, the uh, plumber and HVAC personnel uh, might appreciate that. So there's our airflow. If you're new to this, if you see, this is not the radon reading, this is airflow. And um, if we had a lot of resistance down here, this thing would be way the heck up here. So, we're moving a lot of air. That's about as nerdy as I'm going to get with you on that. And uh, we wired it in. There's actually a spare breaker sitting there ready for us, so that came out nice. And we sealed around the corners. There's just... There's just a little bit of gap there between where the wall meets the floor and it just went the extra mile is all. A little, a little sealant. Not going to hurt anything for sure. Alright, so we're about ready to put all this pipe away. And I did want to take a minute and show you. You know, it looks chaotic at a glance, but it's not. I know where every single thing is in this van. So if you're going to get in this business, um, at the end of the day, you're going to be tired when you start out so you build up some endurance and you're going to be tempted just to just chuck your stuff in the van. Heck with it. Let's get home. Keep all of your stuff at the same place. Every day, put it back at the same place. Know where your stuff is. Know where your tool belt is. Know where your drills are. Know where your fans are. Your fittings. Trash. Keep it where you can easily get to it and pull it out. You don't want trash to be the first thing you put in the van. Anyway, I just wanted to touch on that. Know where your tests are. <laughs> um, know where your towels are. Anyway. Well, I'm glad you could make it out with me today. <laughs> Had a lot of fun. I don't know, for some reason, I was just jacked to do a system today and then wanted to shoot a video. So I hope the stuff that I share with you helps you out. If you intend to get in radon mitigation, this is the place you want to be. I do show you a lot of cool stuff, tough stuff. Um, stuff that you just don't see on other channels typically so give a thumbs up subscribe and i hope to see you soon thanks a lot